So I've come up with three, what I think, practical decompression compression examples here. The first one is just going to use system.zlib to compress and decompress some data. So I'll run this first. And what this does is it takes the data, compresses it, and then decompresses it, and compresses it at different compression levels. So here's the none compression level, which is just stored. It's just going to store the file. And you'll notice it's actually one byte bigger here. And that's because it has a little byte at the front that says uh, the information about being compressed in there. Then we have, here's the default compression, which is a 0.3 ratio. So you can see here's the original, there's the compressed, there's the decompressed. And here's a hash just showing that it was decompressed successfully. That's before, that's after. Fastest, we'll see, and Mac, we'll see not much difference from the default. Little difference, but not much difference. And that's because we're really not dealing with a lot of data. So let's go ahead in here, and I'm going to grab all the source code here to system.zip. And we'll put that in here. And we'll compress that. And we'll see that, again, we're getting uh, much, much different larger difference between default and fastest here. Uh, the max is a little bit better than default, so most of the time probably default's good. But there you go, you can see how it works. So let's take a look at how you do this. So what we're doing here is I just have a method here called test compress that I pass in the different compression levels and it then compresses at that level. So the code here to compress, pretty straightforward. We're, I've added the, you know, I guess I can show you here, system.zlib to our include. So the we have two streams here. We have our string stream for uncompressed. This is the uncompressed data we're reading from the memo. And then we have a memory stream that's our compressed data. And then the compression is actually handled right here. We should use the Z compress stream. So we can use the T compressor, T compression, I think is what it is. Let's look here. Yeah. Um, yeah, T, TZ compression stream or T compression stream. You can use that if you want to have an object to work with. But for this one, I just thought it'd be easier just to have a single method call. And I just use Z compressed stream, pass in the uh, uncompressed stream and the compressed stream, and then the compression level, whichever the compression level is passed into us, and it's one of those four values. And then to decompress it, what we're going to do is we're going to clear that uh, stream, the uh, uncompressed string out, stream out, so that we can reuse it. And we can do the same thing here. We have the sourced destination. We don't specify a compression level because it doesn't need to know the compression level for decompressing it. It just decompresses it. The compression level has to do with the effort it puts into compressing it, but it has nothing to do with decompressing because it decompresses it the same way. And then we put the text in there, and then we just have a little log in here to uh, provide some information so that we can see how it works. And it does compare the hashes to make sure that they did not fail. That's it. That's all it is to working with the Zlib library to compress and decompress data.